XGen is a geometry instancer that allows you to populate the surface of a polygon mesh with an arbitrary number of primitives. XGen enables artists to handle large amounts of instance data that would otherwise slow down a system if loaded into memory. In this example, we've instanced some primitive splines onto our character's head to generate some hair. We can further refine the look of this hair by introducing some modifiers. So what we're going to do is we're going to introduce some cutting on the ends of the hair. I'm going to add a little bit of noise down the length of the hair, and we're going to have some clumps with some subclumps. So with that done, let's go ahead and preview our description one more time. And you'll get a good look of what happens after we start to add in some layered effects on top of that hair. We can further modify this hair by changing the underlying guides that are being used to control where the primitives are being dropped. This is really straightforward to do inside of XGen. All we have to do is display the guide curves, select the guide curves, and maybe modify them using some of the built-in utilities. So let's go ahead and grab some control points on these guys right here. We'll create a lattice from our selection, and we'll just grab some of those points on that lattice and change the guide curves. So now all we have to do is again preview our description one more time and you'll see the modification that we've introduced into the hair. For short hair or fur effects in XGen we use groomable splines. Groomable splines give me a brushed based workflow for creating the overall look and feel of my character's hair or fur. So now that we have a new fur description we'll increase the density of those groomable splines so that we can see what's going on and we'll just grab some of these brush based tools and begin using them to influence the overall effect of what my primitive instance geometry is going to look like. So we'll just give it some length on the front, maybe grab something like this posing tool on the side, give a little swirl over there, kind of pull a sideburn down, and, and we'll mirror this across to the other side. And with that done, we can go ahead and generate the preview of the instance geometry. We no longer need to see those groomable splines. So with that done, now all we have to do is assign a shader to this. This is very straightforward to do inside of Maya. We just go to the standard Maya shading window and we can apply materials to it. So we'll just select this object and we'll assign this simple Maya shader to our XGen hair. So next we're going to be looking at how we can use XGen to do some set dressing for our environment. This is again something that XGen excels at. XGen has a sophisticated set of tools for doing set dressing. For this example, we're going to take some geometry that lives inside of Maya and save it out as a custom archive that will then instance across our ground plane. So to do this, all we have to do is select the geometry and export it out as an archive. Now that the archive is completed, let's go ahead and select the geometry that we want to begin instancing across and create a new XGen description for that piece of geometry, telling it to be a custom geometry archive. We're now presented with the XGen window. Any of these attributes we can use to modify the archives can be driven by maps, by the slider values, or by XGen expressions. For this example, we're going to go browse to our disk and bring in a few archived objects to begin replicating across this piece of geometry. We'll just grab these guys for now. So Maya imports them in, it also brings in the mental ray materials as well as the textures and displays it for me immediately in the viewport. Now obviously if I want to have more of these I just increase the density. And it's a very very fast XGen preview that we get in viewport 2.0 of all that kind of crazy alien foliage. So let's go ahead and drop that density back down to something like a value of 0.7 and we'll add in at any time another archive so we can go back and add in that archive that we just saved out, which is the tree small. As soon as we do that, obviously it brings in the XGen uh, information as well as the mental ray information for the shaders. So we've now got these kind of cool alien trees sort of hanging out in our environment, but really what I want to do is modify where these trees are growing from. Right now they're growing from everywhere on that piece of geometry, and that's not really the desired effect that I want to have. I don't really want the trees sort of near the shoreline. So to change that, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and modify the mask with a simple map, a p-text map. So we'll go and create a map for that guy. We're going to set this to be black and we'll hit create. So as soon as we do that it is going to um, it's going to basically save this out and flood that with black which means no trees grow. My brush is automatically set to paint with white so I can start adding in trees 
sort of in the background here, not near the shoreline, but sort of just kind of hanging out over here. And we'll just kind of really fill this guy up with, with a, bunch of, uh, a bunch of trees. Now all I have to do is hit the Save button, and XGen will go through and start to add in those trees in the areas that I've, that I've painted white. So the last thing that we want to do is we want to modify a few of these trees in length. And this is something, again, that's very easy to do with XGen because we have the massive control of its expression system. So what we're going to do is we're just going to look at this length slider, and I'm going to take the length slider and just add a multiplier on top of it. So we'll jump into the expression for that guy. So we're going to take the output of the ramp, and I'm just going to multiply this times a random generator. So we'll just do rand 0.2 to 2, and we'll go ahead and accept that. So as soon as I do that, you can see now my trees have sort of a random length that I still have the flexibility of the slider to adjust it with, right? So I can still dial in how, how much contribution I want um, that expression to kind of give to the overall length or, of, our, of our objects. So those are just a couple examples of the types of things you can do with XGen. It's an amazing tool for instancing arbitrary geometry across your scene, both for fur and hair as well as instancing geometry for set decorating.